Koch Industries is the largest privately held oil and chemical company in the country. Privately held as in the Koch family owns it. You might remember that one of the Koch brothers, David Koch, spent some of his fabulous oil and chemical wealth on propping up the Tea Party movement. He's the chair of the Americans for Prosperity Foundation and supports lots of other right-wing causes. Another fabulously wealthy Koch brother, however, spends his money in a way that is less Fox Newsy and more lifestyles of the rich and famousy. Uh, Bill Koch bankrolled a yacht racing team that won the America's Cup. He collects Picasso and Salvador Dali and Medigliani and Renoir and Rodin and Degas and Chagall and Cezanne and Monet and Botero and everyone else listed in the index of your Introduction to Expensive Art textbook. And Bill Koch collects wine. He collects really expensive wine. And one of the best articles published in The New Yorker in a long time, Patrick Radden Keefe, a couple of years ago, wrote about how Bill Koch, this fabulously wealthy Koch brother, spent a half million dollars buying wine that had supposedly been owned by Thomas Jefferson. But after he bought it, Bill Koch started to worry that he'd been swindled. To test whether the Thomas Jefferson wine was really from the 18th century, he had the bottles dated by a scientist. Not carbon dated like it was a fossil, but cesium dated. This is so cool. Um, cesium-137 is a thing that doesn't really exist in nature. It didn't exist in this world, really, until humans invented nuclear bombs. Cesium-137 is something that is only produced by nuclear fission. So if you find cesium-137 on something, or in something, then you know that that thing is... Atomic age. It's post-1945. Its provenance is sometime after the first nuclear explosion on Earth. If your thing does, does show traces of cesium-137, it is post-1945. But if it doesn't show traces of cesium-137, it is pre-1945. It's cool, right? Well, zillionaire Bill Koch had a scientist test his Thomas Jefferson wine uh, to, 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 for cesium uh, to see if the bottles were fakes, to see if they were actually wine from post-1945 being passed off as if they were really, really old. That's, I think, the first thing I ever learned about cesium-137, that you can use it to precisely, molecularly mark the start of the atomic age. That's one thing that stuck in my mind about cesium-137. The other thing that stuck in my mind about cesium is dirty bombs. Cesium is what counterterrorism people always say would be the sort of thing that would turn up in a dirty bomb attack. Cesium is highly radioactive. It's around. We produce it at nuclear labs because it has industrial and medical uses. And if a terrorist wanted to lace explosives with nuclear material, radioactive material, to cause widespread radioactive fallout but not a nuclear explosion, people always cite cesium as a likely candidate for a bomb of that type. Now get this. Last week, five men were indicted in South Africa after a sting operation and a shootout and a chase through a crowded area. They were arrested and charged with trying to sell a bunch of cesium to someone they didn't know was an undercover police officer. The arrests happened apparently at a gas station in Pretoria, South Africa. There were many police officers involved, reportedly a lot of gunfire in the streets, and a foot chase of one suspect through a busy downtown intersection. The suspects were caught with some amount of highly, uh, highly radioactive cesium-137. They, they didn't just say they had it. They, in fact, had it in their possession. The cesium had been shielded expertly in lead to make it safe to handle. So someone involved in this, somewhere along the line, was a pro. The stuff was packaged properly, which is comforting to anyone anywhere near those arrests at that gas station. There was no contamination in the area. But it's also worrying in terms of where this stuff came from. These guys got it from someone who knew what he or she was doing and dealing with highly radioactive material. Or the suspects knew that stuff themselves. The five suspects had allegedly planned to sell that radioactive material as part of a larger sale that included the cesium and an industrial nuclear device. Huh? In the Voice of America and in local South African and public radio international reporting on this story, the device these guys wanted to sell along with the cesium is consistently described, I kid you not, as an industrial nuclear device. People haven't found, police haven't found this industrial nuclear device yet, but the reporting seems to indicate that police believe it exists. They say the asking price for the radioactive cesium that they did find on these guys and the nuclear device to go with it was about 45 million South African rand, which is about 6 million U.S. dollars. Now, recall that we lost our collective minds as a country when the Bush administration concocted the he wanted to build a dirty bomb accusation against Jose Padilla, even though none of that was ever proved and all those charges were dropped. 
Well, now we've got five guys arrested actually with radioactive material and a shootout and a big chase with tons of cops through a crowded city and some mysterious nuclear device that police still believe is at large. And we haven't really heard a peep about it. One little blog post so far in the Washington Post from their intelligence reporter, Jeff Stein. But otherwise, this is only in the foreign press so far and nobody else picking it up. Unless these guys are proven to have had that cesium because they were rogue old wine testers working for some Bordeaux hound billionaire. I would like further information about this story, please. If dirty bombs are going to be a real threat and not just some campaign slogan anymore, I would please like some further information about this. Thank you.